Okay, time is up. Let's begin now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining BrossMed online training section. Optimal strategies for PAD treatment, tips and tricks. Peripheral artery disease, often called PAD, affects 12 to 14 percent of the general population. At least over 200 million people worldwide, and the number is increasing at a faster pace due to the aging global population. According to the American Heart Association 2021 report, so so today we will focus on the PAD treatment. It's brown angioplasty is a gold standard for focal lesions. Today, we invite three distinguished experts to share their tips and tricks on optimal strategies for PAD treatment. They are Dr. Chu Ming An. Hi, Dr. An. Hi, Adan. Yeah, Dr. An is also the moderator. Let's welcome. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for uh, the invitations. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and and Dr. Wu Ming Wu Han King. Hello, Dr. King. Yeah, Welcome hi, to join us. I, I'm Wu Han King. Thank you for introduction. You're welcome. And uh, Dr. Abran Oschinash. Hello, Dr. Hi, hello. Welcome. Hi, all from Turkey. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Nice to see you all. On behalf of BrosMed, Please allow me to extend a warm welcome to all the experts and our online audience. Thank you for coming today. And first of all, let me introduce today's moderator and honor speaker, Dr. Chumi An for you. Dr. Chumi An. Chumi yes. An is, yeah, he is currently the clinical professor uh, interventional cardiology from Yonsei from Yonsei Cardi Cardiovascular Hospital and Yonsei University Healthcare System. See your career. Dr. An will sh first share, show us his variety tips and tricks of BrossMed products. And uh, for the rest of the part, Dr. An will lead us for the webinar and moderate the discussion part. Thank you, Dr. An, welcome. Thank you for kind introductions. Yeah, now it's a very some meaningful meeting for some Korea and Turkey, and uh, we have uh, some uh, share our experience of for some peripheral angioplasty. So uh, firstly, I shared my some uh, some some presentation and case file. So my topic. Uh, was a uh, optimal strategy for PAD treatment in uh, some uh, very tips and tricks of uh, BrossMed products. So now uh, we are much uh, uh, more used for some the non-compliant balloon. So it's uh, some the small uh, uh, some some introduction for this uh, product. So you you can you know or or we uh, in PAD cases there are many some various cases was uh, uh, in the peripheral artery disease especially the lesion was uh, very fibrotic and then calcific and long and diffuse regions was uh, some uh, many region was uh, very complex and then the and, some disease is a very long-standing, some arterial sclerosis and arterial sclerosis. So after the some proper some the angioplasty, so it can be easily recoiled or some dissected or some cases so uh, it, it is perforated. So I think uh, some proper initial management was very some important for some the PAD cases. Then uh, many uh, uh, cases in the, especially in critical limb ischemia, so only uh, uh, recoil after balloon angioplasty was noted 
some over the some uh 90 70 percent was recoiled so many patients was initially some revascularized but after that the some cases was easily some recurred or some the aggravated so so in uh, why the physicians need to apply the high uh, pressure uh, to the lesion so because uh, uh previously i said for some there are many carcific and fibrotic lesions and then and uh, also in uh, instant restenotic region and so in the high pressure uh, application uh, get to uh, some achieve me, uh, better lumen gain but uh, many uh, peripheral angioplastic uh, balloon was a semi compliant balloon so it's a non-compliant uh, uh, balloon for some poor uh, scheme of uh, some size and length was uh, uh very as needed uh in uh, previous uh, uh eras and um in radial force was uh, much different from the semi-compliant versus the non-compliant the semi uh, semi-compliant usually some the uh some according to the pressure the some balloon size was increasing so it, it can be easily uh, some damage it for some very high uh, in crash fit and very stiff artery but the non-compliant balloon usually functions and for some increasing pressure can make a more uh, rigidity and it is easily and uh, effectively some inflated uh, very tight region and the less injury uh, compared to the semi-compliant some balloon so I think uh, some radial force and proper radial force was very important for some of the uh, peripheral angioplasty so high uh, vessel stresses at the uh, end the they can be some uh, easily dissected so in dissection can make more some uh, poor outcome for after angioplasty and uh, uh, in uh, previously we said some the high pressure uh some semi-compliant balloon can make a dog bone uh effect and then it's a uh, more injury but the non-compliant balloon can uh, make uh, some evenly some dilated uh, the prep and preparation for the reason for some further uh, angioplasty and uh, radial force uh, uh, can uh, vary uh, some different from the semi-compliant and then non-compliant balloon and then uh, balloon size was much different so some uh, non-compliant can make a good expansion and less injury to the uh, some peripheral artery so it's a, a comparison for compliant the same compliant and non-compliant so you can see that in the left so which so are very uh, different sizes of a balloon for some compare uh, to the same uh, balloon pressure so so uh, previously we were cross uh, uh, some balloon was usually semi compliant for some peripheral angioplasty you know, even in the some uh, atherectomy cases or some it's uh, uh, stented cases but uh, now the preparation and then uh, adjuvant also used by the non compliant and it can be some easily uh, preparated the region and uh, easily some the expansion of the stent or some the region and then uh, less injury for uh, the some uh, during the peri procedure uh, period so uh, brosmat uh, some introduced uh, the three kind of uh, some uh, non compliant balloon for some according to the some a wire system to so the O35 and O18 and O14. So O35 was Hermes, and then O18 system was Eclipse, and then O14 system was Castor and Cis. It's a very so wide a range of some the spectrum of uh, some balloon. So you know some also uh, some uh, usually iliac artery was uh, some by the O35 wire, and then the usually recently we. Uh, some penetrated uh, some femoral artery usually O18 system and the below knee was uh, some O18 and O14 was used for so it's a 
at the at the kind of the some the wire so we uh uses uh, uh, at the size of the some balloon was uh, compatible for some the, at the size of the uh, so wire so in upper extremity also had a very uh, some uh, a variety of disease was noted to so subclavian or some axillary brachial artery so it's uh, uh we we can use this uh, balloon for some the uh, according to the size of uh, some wire and some length and uh, some diameter so in in ideal balloon cathedral for the treatment was uh, uh, it's easily entering and tracking and crossing and then dilate and withdraw. So it's a, a five uh, some item was uh, some very uh, some, uh, some crucial for some the balloon uh, catheter. So then in O35 uh, broadband was a uh, Hermes. Its uh, uh, diameter was uh, from the 3.0 to uh, uh, 10 uh, millimeter and length was uh, uh, from 20 to 150. Such so a uh, shaft length was uh, some variable, so we can use the, any uh, kind of lesion and attack. And then rate burst uh, pressure was uh, 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 over the 22 atmosphere. So in the very uh, tight lesion, we can uh, use this very high pressure, uh, some preparation and adjuvant. So okay, so it's a uh, Hermes was a better. Uh, some entry to the compared to the some conventional some O35 to the other some company uh, balloons, so it's a very uh, uh, easily entered uh, some region, and it's uh, a tip was very uh, smooth and then very small sizes, so it's a uh, excellent uh, some transfer to the region. And then crossing profile was very good compared to the, the previous uh, some uh, angioplasty. And the rewrap performance was very excellent. So, so rewrapping was very important because uh, in some cases, the, some, in small uh, sheets, the, uh, some uh, very long balloon and very long and large balloon cannot be easily uh, some, uh, retrieved from the some sheets. So rewrap performance also very important for some of the performance. So uh, in uh, uh, recently the femoral popliteal lesion, so we uh, usually use this for O18 wire. So so O18 uh, compatible system was very uh, useful useful for some of the angioplasty. So uh, in aqueous O18 system also very uh, useful for some femoral popliteal. Uh, intervention so two point uh, from diameter was two point from two point to zero to eight point and length was uh, to ten to fifteen and the shaft length was variable so weight burst also twenty two atmosphere so it also very uh, very smooth uh, tip and then crossing uh, some profile and late burst was very high so compared to to the other uh, some devices. So um, uh, in uh, endovascular today, also uh, some introductions for some of the in Achilles uh, O18 system for some of the very variable uh, lesion. And uh, below knee artery was uh, usually two point uh, one point five to three point zero some diameter. So uh, it it in in case with uh, some O18 wire was uh, some passed. Uh, some cases the balloon transfer was very dif difficult because it's a very calcific and tortuous so the so balloon transfer was very important for some btk intervention so in the caster nc was uh two, from 2.0 to 8.0 uh some in diameter and the length was uh from 10 to uh, 15 uh, uh 150 and the shaft was very various and also the rate pulse was 22. So Castor also had a, a very uh, stable uh, balloon uh, stability, and then uh, rate burst was a twenty-two. And uh, compared to the other uh, balloons, it's a very uh, balloon uh, diameter was very stable uh, compared to pressure. So it's uh, safe, and then it's, um, very uh, some easily uh, transferred the regions compared to the other some devices. 
So also endovascular today also had uh, introduced the caster and C for some uh, uh, below knee uh, intervention. So uh, I, I share my uh, cases for some the some cases. So in uh, it's a, um, a seventy nine uh, male for intermittent collocation. So anchor brachial index was the uh, left side was a uh, point six six. So initial angiogram shows that uh, uh, you can see that it's a total occlusion, but it's a very uh, some slowly flow was uh, distal, and uh, I think it's a uh, very component of a thrombotic uh, uh, occlusion. So initially, I uh, passed the wire with a microcatheter with a, a O18 uh, wire. And the wire was uh, a little resistance at there, but the uh, microcatheter based wiring uh, usually passed the region uh, is very easily uh, passed. So uh, it is a total occlusive region, but I think it's a more thrombotic component at there. So uh, I use it in these cases, uh, uh, Rotarex or some the uh, thrombectomy and arteriotomy. So uh, first, uh, I use the Rotarex for this region and I check the IBUS for this region. So I usually uh, check the diameter for uh, and then the presence of thrombi and have uh, some the other uh, problem for cystic disease or some of the aneurysmal disease for uh, this region. So there are some little uh, calcific uh, atheroma and then after the uh, rotarex there are minimal uh, thrombos at there so i think uh, the after rotarex the lumen was uh, much improved and then the uh, thrombos was uh, uh, i think the much uh, removed from the rotarex and then uh, i use the uh, because the I was usually O14 wire on O18 wire, but uh, previously I used the O14 wire based I was uh, technique. But in previous uh, angioplasty, I I changed the the wire for some the O35 or O18. But in these cases, uh, O14 wire based angioplasty was possible. So a uh, caster of five uh, by the 100 millimeter balloon was performed in these cases. And after that, the eye was shows it's a very good expansion. And the final angiogram shows a very good patency. So, and uh, uh, another uh, DCB was uh, performed in this uh, region. And then uh, after the DCB, the eye was shows a very uh, good expansion. And the uh, final angiogram, Shows uh, good uh, patency. I think a little some slow flow for some after the DCB, but uh, it's uh, improved by the uh, IV uh, intraarterial nitrate. So uh, in this case, the the IV was guided uh, some exact balloon sizing and then the O uh, fourteen based uh, some caster NC balloon was used for some reason preparation so after the procedure the uh, anchor brachial index was much uh, improved so it's my first cases uh, in some uh, cases where i use the schistless uh, some angioplasty so it's an integrate uh, femoral artery approach so in in these cases i use the micro schist dilator first and then the performed the angiogram and the popliteal very short uh, uh, tip short uh, uh, stenosis was uh, noted. So in uh, below the knee, it's uh, not a big problem. So I uh, did not insert it, the schist. The only wire based and then balloon based uh, schistless uh, angioplasty. So after the wire crossing, the only balloon was inserted to. The femoral artery and then balloon Achilles uh, three three by thirty uh, balloon for some three minutes. And after that, the uh, balloon angioplasty the patency was very good, and then uh, hemostasis was less than 
uh, 10 minutes in these cases. So it's a very effective and less injury intervention can be possible for some of the schistless angioplasty. So to list the cases, it's also very it's tough cases, critical limb ischemia. And uh, SFA was uh, totally occluded. And uh, he had a history of uh, phantom pop bypass graft and occluded uh, bypass graft. And then it's very difficult to control arterial approach because very tortuous and calcific uh, in iliac artery. So I uh, so inserted anti-grade approach. It's a femoral vein for some the, some request for anesthesia. Uh, so I I inserted the femoral vein. It's a head and it's a uh, some limb. And anti-grade approach was performed uh, some the uh, micro cyst. And I uh, inserted the microsis first, and the angiogram was performed uh, like this. So initially, the wire was uh, inserted to the defemoral artery. So in these cases, uh, it's a SFA was uh, totally occluded. So you can see that the defemoral artery was very tight, and SFA also was very uh, totally occluded. There are some uh, island in the uh, in the middle portions of the SFA, but the, it, it, that lesion was already some performed the VAM2 pop bypass and the Japan2 pop bypass was occluded. So I uh, inserted the micro first and then it's uh, previously the Dr. Bolia from the uh, England uh, was uh, uh, some, some performed the uh, uh, SFA also flush occlusion for subintimal angioplasty. I uh, performed the microsis, uh, microsis based uh, uh, wiring. So the microsis was inserted to the ostium of the, uh, the SFA OS, and then O18 based subintimal angioplasty was performed for in, in very calcific uh, lesion. So uh, in this uh, stages, uh, there are only some microsis based uh, uh, subintimal angioplasty. So angioplast uh, some wiring was uh, performed to the the middle portions, and then uh, it's uh, there are some uh, continuously the uh, so intimal some wiring to the middle portion of a uh, calcific area, uh, and uh, perform the angioplasty at there. So uh, you can see uh, the middle portion there are little some uh, island. And then uh, in tight lesion was uh, this the SFA. Uh, there are uh, some uh, big resistance to the uh, distal. So I uh, changes the some method. So it's a, uh, in, in, in this region, you can see that the subintimal was approached to just the distal, just uh, adjacent to the distal uh, some collateral. So I inserted the uh, Hermes uh, 4.0 to 40 balloon based uh, uh, wiring for some heart region. So I changed the O18 wire to Herbert and the ESTA to 4, 4, 40 gram. And the wire was passed. Uh, finally, the, the tight of uh, some P1 uh, region. So I changed the sheets and then the balloons at there and then uh and and uh, Achilles 5 by the 150 and you can see the the uh, some uh, uh some region was open and then I uh, inserted the drug eluting stand at the proximal SFA for some initially tearing site of the subintimal angioplasty and the adjuvant Hermes uh, 6 by uh, 80 millimeter was uh, performed for this lesion and uh, final angiogram it's a uh, reader some very uh, unexpanded because it's very uh, calcific lesion but the uh, distal uh, uh, flow was very good and then it, this patient was a uh, wound was very much improved so it's a uh, anchor bracket index initially some 0.7 to 0.4 so after that, uh, the right side was a 0.9 and left side was 0.85. So it's a good result after the subintima angioplasty with a non-compliant balloon. 
And final cases, I introduced uh, recently uh, strategy for some the SFP intervention by the uh, extra uh, vascular ultrasound guided wiring. So it's uh, uh, usually uh, some uh, radiation free intervention. So it's, uh, initially the uh, ultrasound guided for it's a CTO region. So it's a chronic total occlusion or flush occlusion of SFA. And then uh, very uh, uh, pre-procedure uh, ultrasound evaluation for SFA. And then uh, sufficient backup by supporting uh, guiding sheets and then micro catheter. And hard wire uh, was uh, usually four, 40 grams of uh, some O18, O14 guide wire. And I use the uh, some ultrasound uh, CTO penetration by this uh, uh, technique for uh, centers of the uh, SFA. And uh, it's a successfully uh, penetrated uh, the wire to the distal SFA. And then uh, we uh, usually check the IBUS and then the NC balloon and then drug coating uh, balloon was used for this uh, tight lesion. So it's uh, recently uh, tried uh, for some the end of uh, extravascular ultrasound guided the CTO crossing. So uh, um, so uh, in summary, the in uh, previously work course uh, uh, balloon was usually semi compliant, but recently preparation and then uh, some adjuvant. Uh, balloon also used by the non-compliant for, for better uh, region entry and uh, minimize uh, recoil and dissection. And we can uh, apply for high pressure balloon. And then it's also effective in the calcific and fibrotic and instant resistant region. So, so uh, I usually uh, some high pressure NC was used for uh, for some tight as uh, uh, peripheral artery disease. Okay, it's uh, my uh, cases sharing. So, and uh, thank you for kind your attention. So, and I introduced, uh, uh, okay, so uh, how about uh, so some question or some comment for this, our our presentation or some, Cases, so from Dr. Kim or from uh, Dr. Evren. Thank you, Dr. N. Is there any question from Dr. Kim and Dr. Dr. Evren? So nice to meet you, Dr. Evren. <laughs> and me too. Very uh, good cases. I'm very pleased uh, committing this uh, session. Uh, you have great cases uh, and a very good job. Thank you for your efforts. I, I have a question, Dr. An. Yeah. Uh, when we encounter the top region, the performance such as pushability and deliverability and trackability is important. Uh, so compared with semi-compliant balloon, uh, what do you think about the performance in this NCVALUN? So uh, it's a very good uh, question and comment. So I think uh, uh, in, uh, in a very tight region, so uh, in micro catheter supported wiring was uh, in some cases very difficult because uh, the supporting power was very poor. And uh, in hard cases, the, the micro catheter was uh, not easily penetrate. And even in hard wire, the hard wire was usually passed through the extravascular spaces. So I think a small non-compliant balloon uh, supported uh, wiring was very effective in the some intraluminal tracking for some the femoral property artery. So in, in that cases, the semi-compliant balloon was a, a little more injury to the some the supporting system. So I think uh, I usually very low profile, uh, non-compliant balloon uh, anchored and the wiring to the type region 
was it's a very effective. So I think uh, I strongly recommend it for some of the very high uh, cash file reason passes for some of the uh, balloon supported wiring. And then uh, another some some benefit for non-compliant balloon was uh, you see that the uh, drug coating balloon was uh, uh, very uh, largely some variable to penetration of drug to the according to the region. So non-compliant balloon preparation was uh, very effectively uh, prepared the, the some the fiber team crash field region. So the effectiveness of a uh, drug coating balloon was uh, maximized in in uh, uh, preparation by the non-compliant balloon. So drug coating balloon efficacy was uh, increasing by the non-compliant preparation. So it's another some benefit for some non-compliant uh, preparation. Okay, so so after uh, another uh, some uh, question and discussion was after the uh, the other cases. So I introduced uh, some second speaker Hello. for some, uh, yeah. Yes, doctor, a very good presentation. Uh, here I have another question: Which yes. would you prefer to perform, standing or primary DCP procedures? So uh, I. You, 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 your question was uh, usually. Uh, it's standing more or primary DCB procedure more. So, wh which one do you like to per perform? Uh, okay, so it's a very yeah. good question. Yeah. So, I think it's yeah. a very, uh, according to the some reason and then reason penetration. I think uh, uh, so in some uh, very long region and uh, a very cash field lesion, we usually more preferable for sub intimal angioplasty because it's a uh, uh, less radiation and uh, uh, less uh, effort uh, time for some the procedure. So in the initially we tried to sub intimal angioplasty. So I usually inserted the uh, stent for some proximal entry, but uh, usually uh, in case with the intraluminal tracking. Uh, by any method of ultrasound or some the angiographically, I usually more uh, perform the drug coating uh, balloon uh, and then uh, usually uses the atherectomy devices. So it's a uh, non uh, some uh, nothing behind uh, some uh, procedure. So it's a uh, uh, very variable compared to the some recent characteristic. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So uh, we can move some the other uh, presentation. So I introduced uh, Dr. Kim uh, Woo Hyun. Uh, he's uh, some assistant professor in the some Hanyang uh, University in uh, Seoul, uh, South Korea, and he's a uh, interventional cardiologist. And his uh, topic was uh, his uh, ex uh, experience about the uh, non-compliant balloon. Some Dr. Kim, please. Thank, thank you for introduction. I'm Uyan Kim from Hanyang University. And... Okay, it's a great honor to be with Professor An, who guided my residence training. Actually, the topic I was asked for is my experience about NC balloon. Personally, I have had more experience with patients with BTK region that manifested as limb ischemia than with patients with iliofemoral region that manifested as claudication. Until recently, since there was no available BTK NC balloon, so I had mostly used semi-compliant balloon for BTK intervention. So this time, BrosMed and she balloon was introduced to my hospital. So I would like to share what we felt while using NC balloons such as Castor and she and Achilles and she. I don't have much experience with NC balloon BTK intervention. So this time, I want to talk about the disappointment of semi-compliant balloon and difficulty in BTK intervention. And then I will talk about my first experience about NC balloon in BTK intervention today. 
So the concept of Enshi Balloon originated from the coronary intervention and Enshi Balloon can achieve optimal expansion and larger lumen than semi-compliant balloon despite achieving the same, same final balloon size. So it is primarily used for post-dilate coronary stent and it is often used as a tool for region preparation in heavy calcified undilated region. And this figure explains the region for using NC balloon in tight region. Semi-compliant balloon may cause vessel injury by overstretching a part other than the diseased segment when high pressure is applied due to the dog bone effect. effect. And however, since the NC balloon can give focal pressure to the region, this balloon can minimize recoil and dissection. This is coronary data using OCT. Pre and post diameter were measured according to the balloon type. In terms of pre dilation and post dilation, it showed NC balloon is more effective in instant minimal luminal diameter and instant after post dilation instant minimal luminal diameter compared with semi-compliant balloon. So therefore the NC balloon is expected to be more beneficial in region preparation for calcified or fibrotic region while minimizing recoil or dissection. So the region we mainly encountered when performing BTK intervention have following top characteristics. Most are multi-level and multi-vessel disease. And in most cases, there are more long segment CTO than stenotic region. And after balloon angioplasty, we often experience recoil and barrel trauma. And in addition, most of the patients are frail subjects with multiple risk factors. So it may be difficult to perform the procedure for a long time. If this patient had disease than ATA and PTA and peroneal on CT and long segment lesion are observed in reconstruction imaging in ATA and PTA. So in DS, DSA imaging, the ostia lesion at ATA was observed in long segment stenosis at mid to distal ATA and long segment uh, stenotic region and PTA was observed. In this case, repeated balloon angioplasty is attempt, usually attempt, and we often experience the recoil. And in this patient in reconstruction imaging, we or it, it was also observed in long segment CTO in PTA and ATA. And after engaged the BTK angioplasty, the long segment CTO was observed. And this elderly patient presented with clinical limb ischemia due to the artificial joint, we cannot evaluate exactly around the palmitial region. And after the injection, the contrast, we can not evaluate the palmitial region exactly. And as mentioned earlier, most VTK region are tough. And even though the tough regions was well dilated, we frequently experienced the recoil after balloon angioplasty. And this patient had the region in SFA and ATA region. And I show you only the BTK region. So I tried to the balloon angioplasty with semi-compliant balloon. And after balloon angioplasty, immediate result was tolerable, but uh, however, I insert the SFA stent and after two or three minutes later, we checked the VTK 
issue of recoil. So we usually encounter the, this type of recoil in BTK intervention. So there is no definite solution to overcome this limitation of BTK intervention, but uh, we usually balloon dilation stepwise from small size balloon to larger size balloon and repeated balloon and prolonged implant implantation was needed. And it, it usually it takes a lot of balloon and a lot of time. So uh, several devices like astrectomy might be used but not all center have this device available. But, and I think therefore I thought that NC balloon will improve this situation. So I, I introduced some simple case. A 67 year old man came to our hospital due to the delayed wound healing. The patient was on dual antiplatelet therapy after stenting the proximal to mid LAD and proximal circumflex with non STEMI one year ago. And the ejection fraction was 40% with LAD and sub territory regional wall motion abnormality. And six months ago, although PK was performed for left ATA, the left great toe was amputated at the time. And this is his toe. And the patient had dysplastic nevus on the right great toe and biopsy was performed. But however, the wound healing after biopsy was delayed and it worse. So he referred to our clinic. So I checked the CT angiogram. So it showed the total occlusion on ATA on CT imaging. And there was little calcium, but it was diffuse fibrous region. So this is angio imaging after the enga engaging in ATA and total occlusion of ATA was observed. And initially I tried to in intraluminal wiring with CXI microcatheter support, but I failed. So I changed the subintimal wiring. So subintimal wiring was done with 035 wire. And at the distal ATA, there's some resistance I met, but the wire re-entered the true lumen of the distal ATA and it was confirmed that the wire was re-entered with the true lumen of distal ATA. So, I initially used the semi-compliant balloon because I, a, my default strategy in PTK intervention used the semi-compliant balloon, small balloon and to more larger balloon. So I used the, because I need the, some resistance to this type ATA. So I use the semi-compliant balloon 1.5 size, but the balloon was ruptured. So the, the region at the ATA was very tight and it is very uh, fibrotic region. So I choose, to, I tried to use the NC balloon, Castor 2.5 at 2.0 and balloon angioplasty for this type ATA. and mid and proximal ATA. So check the angiogram. So the immediate result was good. And, but I used the small balloon. So I, I think the more larger balloon is needed to the, uh, for more better results. So I, at this time I use the, uh, tapered semi-compliant balloon and this tire size was 2.5 and proximal size was 3.5 and the balloon dilation was done and immediately the result is not satisfactory because the because of the recoil so I used the NC balloon the size with 3.0 and balloon angioplasty with proximal and mid ATA 
and the immediate result was looks good. And after waiting for three minutes, I checked the GSA imaging, and it is now a dissection. And the injection another angle, and it looks good and not recoil. So the result is good. So I finished the procedure. So because the region we met during the BTK intervention are very tough region, so the performance such as pushability is considered to be important. It is my limited experience, but I think the delivery and pushability and tranquility was not uh, was good. And I would like to hear some opinion on other experience, experts. So, and uh, uh, based on the performance of the NC balloon, I would like to hear another expert opinion on using it as a default strategy for region preparation for BTK intervention. And uh, usually in coronary intervention, NC balloon is uh, associated with increase the risk of side branch occlusion and potential distal embolization. However, in peripheral circulation, side branch are not as relevant compared to the coronary bed, and the club is not often not a factor for uh, chronic limb ischemia setting. So uh, I would like to hear some opinion um, about that. Thank you for introduction. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for Professor Kim. It's a uh, very good and uh, informative cases. So uh, is there any some question or comment from audience uh, about these cases and the uh, comment on the strategy for some is a uh, tough uh, BTK lesion? Um, Dr. Ebron? Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I would like to ask some uh, one question about the low knee lesions. Is uh, you usually prefer uh, 80 millimeter uh, length or the longer one? Uh, what is your preference uh, reasons? Uh, usually, usually uh, it is depends on the region, region length. So uh, when I met the uh, diffuse region, I usually, I prefer the long balloon, but, but in that case, uh, in available balloon was only sm small size balloon. So, so I used 18 millimeter size balloon, but usually I prefer the long, long balloon. Okay, thank you. Great case. So is there any uh, question from audience or comments? Yeah, uh, Mr. King, I have a question. Uh, what is your primary and objective treatments in BTK intervention, like standing uh, boba or astrectomy? In, in, in Korea, the, there, uh, we, we have only option for uh, balloon angioplasty in BTK intervention because the uh, stent is not available in because due to the insurance problem and there are no data for superiority for uh, stent for BTK intervention. So we usually in Korea we usually uh, use balloon only balloon angioplasty in BTK intervention and some some experience the larger center uh, usual. Uh, frequently use the device like that, astrectomy, just uh, turn it on. But uh, in most center use only balloon. Okay. So in some, in some uh, cases, the, the low knee astrectomy was uh, some useful in a very tight lesion and um, uh, usually proximal portions of a BTK artery. So, uh, we usually rotational atherectomy for some BTK 
uh, proximal calcified regions, such a uh, uh, stream was used for some uh, some region, but uh, usually uh, some mentioned by the Professor Kim, the uh, uh, balloon angioplasty was a primary some strategy, and uh, in in critical limb ischemia. So I think a drug coating balloon was uh, uh, not the confirmed data because it's a uh, many cases was uh, very poor circulation after the DCB because it's uh, embolization or some. So I think uh, in especially in critical limb ischemia, drug, drug coating balloon angioplasty is still questionable for some of the Delaney intervention. So is there any comment or? So I think uh, Dr. Uh, Kim's uh, cases was uh, some very, very uh, good response for some of the NC uh, balloon angioplasty and uh, pre preparation and final outcome. So I think uh, in the very long region and classified region, the semi-compliant uh, balloon can be easily uh, some ruptures and then not uh, effectively some uh, some expansion for some the tidal lesions. So I think uh, uh, size by size uh, NC uh, expansion was more effective for some initial uh, strategy for 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 the reason. Okay, the time was a little earlier. But how I think uh, I think uh, the we uh, we can share the Dr. Evans uh, experience. So I introduced uh, Dr. Evans. He is a associate professor of cardiology, and uh, I think uh, he's also sur surgeon. Your surgeon? Yes, I am cardiovascular surgeon. Yeah, your cardiovascular surgeon. So he's a uh, Ankara University of uh, University Faculty of the Medicine Department of the Cardiovascular Surgery uh, in Turkey. So yeah, his yeah. topic was combined endovascular approaches for some infra inguinal lesions. And Dr. Uh, Evren, uh, please. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. Uh, I would like to share our colleagues uh, some experiences about uh, non-compliant ballooning. And also, I am very happy uh, being with you in this a good presentation. Uh, I I will talk about uh, some our cases uh, for infraangular lesions, and we have some experiences with the Brosmets uh, ballooning. So uh, we want to uh, share our experiences now. Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I also uh, talk uh, about my uh, my company, my company, my city, and uh, and also the our founder Atatürk uh, in 1923. Uh, next year, uh, it's about 100 years for the constitution of our country, and this is Anat Kabir. If, uh, if, you, if you come, uh, we can uh, very proudly uh, welcome you. Uh, also, I will tell about the Ankara University Cardiovascular Surgery, as it is established as a cardiothoracic surgery clinic in 1966. Then, the uh, first cardiovascular surgery department is established in Turkey in a university hospital in uh, March 1985. Then first artificial heart implantation in Turkey was accomplished by uh, Dr. Hakko Akalon and teammates in our clinic on February 27, 1988. Uh, we have 10 consultant doctors, 17 residents, six perfusionists, and uh, 57 nurses. In our heart center facility, we have three standard OR for heart surgery and one hybrid uh, OR for uh, endovascular and complex cases. We have uh, 50, uh, 54 patients' uh, beds in the heart center, uh, 15 ICU beds, and also six isolated uh, ICU for ECMO patients. Uh, this is our hybrid OR, and also our clinical chef, Dr. Levent Yazajola, professor. And uh, it is our uh, hybrid room that we uh, accomplished our cases for uh, all aortic and peripheral arterial disease also open surgery and uh, hybrid uh, combined uh, vascular interventions are made. And also we have a cardiopulmonary uh, bypass uh, machine in our room. 
uh, as you see, we, we could make an open surgery uh, uh, combined with the uh, endovascular interventions. Uh, femoral popliteal lesions, uh, especially special femoral artery lesions, are very uh, interesting as the evolution and also the acute canal uh, usually make the uh, stenosis in this superficial femoral artery for the extension and torsion. And we also uh, some obstacle for the patient's uh, femoral artery flow. So we usually uh, have to make uh, some medical treatment and then we have to make some interventions. This is our uh, number one case. It's a 61 year old male, COPD and hypertension smoker. And also he has a right foot claudication from time to E and right ankle brachial index is uh, 0 0.5. In this patient, you, you, you see a very long uh, lesion uh, in SFA for the right arm, and then we, we, uh, try, we, we try a double, a double access technique for this patient as, as, uh, with, with cross uh, coming from the SFA from left, and then we, we, we use a pop tail uh, access for this patient for making this long lesion be, be penetrable. And we generally use uh, non-compliant balloon first for these type of uh, lesions as it, it makes us, as we couldn't usually use uh, atherectomy devices as you, you, you mentioned that jet stream. So we generally use a, a long, uh, long time uh, inflation, uh, non-compliant PTA uh, for these type of patients. And we, we are generally, patient uh, for about three or three uh, uh, point five uh, minutes for these type of patients. And then uh, you, you see that uh, very uh, good patency uh, after these attempts, but we generally be patient as we, we make uh, three different segments, uh, two times ballooning these type of lesions. And we generally don't want to use uh, stenting if, if, if it's a, a uh, flow occlusion was occurred, and we generally prefer uh, ballonic. And we usually use non compliant uh, Hermes uh, balloon for these kind of lesions, as, as you see, a six millimeter, 40 millimeter. And we, we first, uh, for make it prior dilatation, uh, semi compliant atropus uh, ballooning, and then we generally uh, use. Uh, Hermes 6 balloon. This is another uh, tough case for us as if the patient was at uh, operative bilateral femoral popliteal bypass at bilateral iliac stenting uh, about five years ago. Uh, it's right ankle brachial index 0 0.4, uh, left ankle brachial index 0 0.5, and we, we, we will make an uh, auxiliary brachial intervention for this patient for the left arm and also we make an popliteal intervention for this patient and we see this uh, stump uh, part of this femoral popliteal lesion and then uh, we, we use double access with popliteal, uh, popliteal part for uh, retrograde and axillary part for anterograde and then we use a uh, non compliant balloon for the uh, SFA part of the lesion. And then uh, we use a uh, castor, then this uh, O0014 uh, PTA for four millimeter 15 and then six millimeter 15. And then we, uh, we uh, use this ballooning for approximately P1 and P2 levels. And then uh, we, we make a long time ballooning for about uh, three minutes, and then we repeat it about two minutes, and then we, we make it a great uh, potency for this patient. Also, this patient's uh, left, uh, right, uh, right uh, popliteal uh, anastomosis has a about 60% uh, stenosis, and we use also another uh, PTA ballooning for this graft. And this is a, a, another person, a 51 year old diabetic and bilateral leg claudication 
right ankle breaker index uh, 0 0.55 and left ankle breaker index 0 0.63. And uh, as you see, there's the bilateral uh, SFA uh, long occluded relations are uh, detected. Uh, and uh, walking distance is about uh, 100 meters. So we generally uh, attempt for, for uh, bilateral uh, limbs. So we use uh, anti-grade uh, uh, common femoral artery intervention and also microcatheter intervention from uh, supin OPTL approach. And we, we generally make the access of the left uh, leg and then we make uh, the penetration and then uh, we, we use the long segment following uh, about uh, five five point uh, five point uh, one hundred fifty and five point one hundred twenty so uh, atropos uh, we use this part of the uh, segment. We use atropos is, is very long as we we we, we make a great patency uh, after the uh, intervention as you see it. And the other patient has uh, a seventy two year old male diabetic hypertension, ex smoker, uh, right ankle brachial uh, index couldn't measured, right leg claudication. As you see it, then we use uh, Castor 9 compliant uh, 3.5 and 4.5 millimeter uh, ballooning uh, from Antigrad uh, approach for the SFA lesion. And we all along the tibialis anterior part of the leg, and then a very good result. The other uh, patient we we couldn't uh, get any uh, ankle brachial as a very, very low pressure. And also, it is an occlusion in the common femoral artery. So, we, we, we make a cut down approach. We make a patch plastic for uh, common femoral artery and then uh, extra, uh, extra vascular ultrasound guidance. We uh, catheterize the SFA and we all along the SFA segment and P1 and P0 segment ballooning uh, to the tibialis anterior. And then uh, we make these uh, approximately three minutes uh, double time uh, uh, ballooning. And then we make a good uh, potency of the patient and the ankle breaker index about uh, 0 0.5. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abraham. So, so did there any? Is there any uh, comments or some the some question for his cases? Hello, Dr. M. We we have got one question from the chat board. Can you see? Uh, so how much uh, does the peripheral uh, venous disease account for the total peripheral disease? So you you manage the venous disease? Yes, also we, we make the venous diseases. But I think that in a year, approximately 40 or 45 peripheral venous patients, approximately 25 persons, I think, totally. 25% venous, peripheral venous disease. As we usually so how manage. how you do you usually manage the peripheral uh, venous disease? Uh, so in DVT or some the generally uh, approximately uh, thirty percent are acute DVT. Uh, also twenty five percent uh, acute pulmonary emboli uh, as we uh, intervene with uh, catheter directed thrombolysis. Uh, we may sometimes use ECMO and then. The other type of our post-thrombotic syndrome patients is we have to uh, get managed to iliac stenosis and we have to make ballooning and uh, also uh, stenting for this kind of patients. Uh, also, venous ulcer is very important as uh, 
there are some combined uh, diseases as uh, venous, uh, chronic venous uh, disease plus uh, post-traumatic syndrome and the perforating is a problem. So we also uh, intervene uh, these kind of patients. Okay. So is there any uh, other comment or question? Thank you for your great case and lecture. And because you are a surgeon, not an interventional cardiologist, <laughs> yeah. so I, I, I would like to ask you a question that seems unrelated to your lectures. As an oh, interventional cardiologist, we often, often consider surgical treatment, if necessary, for iliofemoral lesions. However, mm -hmm. in case of isolated BTK regions, it is generally difficult to consider surgical option. In, as a surgeon, in what case can you consider the surgical treatment for, for isolated BTK region? And why, what type of surgeon surgery can you consider? I think that a uh, very good question. Thank you very much. As in the BTK lesions, uh, we generally perform if the patient has a wound uh, for the toe and the other limb. We, we, we have to, if we have to make a limb salvage, we generally use uh, anterior tibial artery or the distal part of the lesions. We generally use PTA. But if there is a disease on the popliteal part, a trification part, we, we, we also intervene and we make a cut down for popliteal artery and we made a, a bypass from femoral artery. And the other option, maybe sometimes uh, AV fistula for no, uh, no uh, vessel zone patients, but uh, I think the results are very poor. So we do not generally uh, prefer surgery for this type of uh, lesions. But sometimes we, uh, we, we uh, find some patients as they are misdiagnosed. A pro, uh, especially for BTK, but thrombotic lesions and thrombotic, but chronic thrombotic lesions. So we generally uh, intervene uh, below the knee part of the popliteal artery and we, we make thrombectomy and plasty. And uh, then we, we make an approach, a hybrid approach, and we make ballooning for TBS anterior and perineal artery. So uh, they may uh, find some. Uh, good results there. Thank you. So another question for our audience was, uh, which C do you prefer use the sub-compliant sub uh, sub uh, balloon or NC balloon as primary uh, dilation balloon? Uh, I think that we, we, we generally prefer now uh, approximately three or six months. We generally prefer non-compliant balloons as you you mentioned that the recoil weights are uh, really low for the semi-compliant balloon. But, but you know that sometimes we couldn't make the non-compliant and we have on, uh, on near side, uh, we have semi-compliant, so we use semi-compliant. But if we, we make a, a preference, then we choose non-compliant balloons. So what, uh, why are you, do you prefer the system? What, uh, what wire system to so OFI? Of three five or o eighteen or o fourteen wire, yeah, generally eighteen or what? O eighteen. So now uh, o eighteen wire was more widely used in the world uh, widely. Yeah. So, I think, uh, so is there any comment or questions? So we have a a, a little uh, time for some the <laughs> conference. So I think. Uh, uh, I share my today's cases for <laughs> some uh, more more some the case more discussion. Yeah. yeah, so it's uh, uh I shared my cases. Uh, okay. Can you see the this case this uh some video? Yes, we yes. could see. Okay. So initially, the this this cases was a eighty five year old male, 
So both anchor brachial index was a point uh, less than 0. 0.7, and initial angiogram shows the right uh, iliac artery was uh, diffuse stenosis, and the left side also diffuse stenosis. So, and uh, coronary we we performed usually coronary angiogram uh, with uh, peripheral angioplasty. So coronary angiogram shows it's a very uh, tight stenosis, the proximal uh, LED. I think uh, he is a, a very severe cloud cone. So I think uh, he didn't uh, some uh, suffer from the angina. I think after the the peripheral angioplasty, he he is uh, working, and I think he uh, complained of angina after the, the angioplasty. So initial uh, peripheral angiogram shows that a very tortuous iliac artery and the tight stenosis to uh, the uh, iliac, uh, external iliac artery. And you can see that the uh, superficial femoral artery was uh, uh, totally occluded. So angiogram shows uh, SAP ostium was uh, some uh, visualized and then distal uh, landing was not uh, some visualized. So initially, I attempt uh, contralateral seven francis, and then the wire was usually O18 system with the support of a micro catheter, and that did uh, there are some stuff. So the wire was uh, uh, engaged to the uh, the ostium of SFA. And then microcatheter uh, was uh, uh, inserted to ostium of uh, uh, SFA. So you can see the microcatheter was inserted to proximal SFA, and the wire was uh, a little advanced. And then the you can see the it's a wire was uh, looping to the proximal, and then uh, the uh, looping wire was uh, advanced easily. Uh, to the mid portion, so it's a very uh, fast advance, and then you can see that there are very harsh fit lesion to the distal SFA, and a uh, minimal collateral circulation to the P1 uh, uh, region. So I uh, 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 at, at uh, during the procedure, the iliac artery stenosis uh, can make a uh, occlusion of total flow of a uh, deep femoral artery. So I opened the iliac artery uh, for some NC 5.0 balloon for opening for some flow uh, improvement of the femoral artery. So balloon angioplasty was performed in iliac artery. And then the reinserted the schist. And you can see the distal uh, tight lesion was very difficult to uh, wire passes. So it's a, a wire was uh, sort of intimately uh, and the outside of the vessel. So it's a uh, already impending perforating. So I uh, uh, retrieved the micro catheter and the reinserted the hard wire uh, for it's a uh, very adjustment to the diesel uh, lumen. So I inserted the hard wire to penetrate it. Uh, the, uh, in this uh, system, so you can see the wire was uh, uh, distal uh, uh, system. It's a penetrating. It's a four, 40 gram of uh, some asato of uh, O14 system. And then the, we check the distal flow. It's uh, uh, some true rumen was uh, some uh, was open. And then we, uh, after that, we performed the uh, uh, balloon angioplasty first. It's a five, five point uh, zero, uh, uh, one hundred and fifty NC uh, Achilles was performed, and uh, proximal the performed is NC balloon, and it's another NC balloon. It's a very uh, long. Proximal to uh, P1 uh, lesion. So, and you you can see the uh, some uh, SFA was open. And then proximal uh, short lesion, I inserted the DS for some illuvia. 
for uh, 6 by uh, uh, 80. So it's uh, usually cover the proximal uh, spaces of uh, subintimal theory. And then uh, balloon again for some NC balloon uh, as well. And the final angiogram. So, so, uh, so there are no pressure gradient from the proximal to distal. Uh, and then we also uh, perform the iliac intervention. It's a, a pressure gradient was over the 40 millimeter in systolic pressure. So I inserted a bare metal stent to the proximal uh, distal common iliac to external iliac artery. And then also perform the uh, O35 system. So and then Hermes NC compliant was uh, uh, performed the uh, full expansion of the uh, stand. So it's uh, uh, another uh, I my strategy for iliac intervention. It's a very short uh, NC balloon was performed after the stenting because uh, the long uh, iliac artery ballooning can make a straightening of the iliac artery. It can make a some rupture. So I uh, repeated the short balloon was uh, expansion for ilia uh, expansion. So it's uh, uh, after the the expansion, the ilia artery is open, and also right side was a very short stenosis to il external ilia artery. The pressure gradient was uh, uh, thirty millimeter mercury in the common iliac to common femoral. So I inserted the balloon expandable stent at the uh, here, and then the the no pressure gradient between the region. So it's uh, my today's cases. It's a uh, both both iliac artery and then uh, total occluded long SFA region. So so in the, in in iliac and in uh, SFA and in Piloni, I think the NC strategy is very important for safe and, and uh, effective uh, uh, intervention uh, for in peripheral angioplasty. So I think uh, we have uh, over the one uh, one and a half hour. So is there any comment or some the question about the cases or uh, some meeting? Hey, I, I have a question in this case. Thanks for the good case. Uh, like, like this case, if there is any tips for uh, re-enter the wire to true lumen in the intimate space in distal SFA, please introduce it. Some yeah, tips. I think uh, uh, distal re-entry in this uh, very long in by lesion was a uh, uh, very tough. So I think uh, in uh, during the subintimal uh, wiring, the wire loop uh, uh, we should focus on the wire loop is uh, increasing or decreasing or stable. So if uh, the wire loop was increasing, uh, the uh, subintimal space is more uh, externally extension. So it can be easily ruptured. So the so wire looping was uh, very keep uh, smaller. And then the, if there are resistance, I think uh, we change the, the hard wire true room and penetration. So I think a mixed uh, a strategy for subintimal and intraluminal, uh, it's uh, uh, first uh, some for some safe uh, penetration. And then if uh, there are very adjustment to the wire to the distal lumen, uh, there are many methods for some penetration for distal lumen. So I think uh, first was we can use uh, some re-entry devices. And second was uh, Dr. Everange says that the, the bi-directional approach was can make uh, some uh, cart or reverse cart technique for some the true lumen wiring. And another was uh, I showed that this case is for hot wire direct penetration for some distal lumen, but but in this uh, cases the the micro catheter to the distal lumen was very closely 
uh, very short uh, segment. It can be easily uh, targeted by the hard wire penetration. So there can be some uh, some used uh, any method for some the according to the reason characteristic. So thank uh, Dr. Abraham. Dr. Ram, thank you very much. You, you, you use, I think, a very great technique for uh, penetrating the SFA as nearly no stump up there. And you easily get the uh, hunter channel uh, position. I think that you have to mention the tip of this type of uh, reintervention, SB uh, reentry, as we couldn't find the reentry devices in Turkey. For these, but I think that yes, car technique, double access technique is very good. But your technique is also very good. So please uh, define the, the tip of this SFA part uh, intervention techniques. <laughs> yeah. So I think Dr. Everett. So you you usually approach the popliteal artery. So okay. you puncture the by the ultrasound or some. Uh, how how you the cut down or uh, no no we we, we usually uh, spine position and then we, we usually use an ultrasound as uh, different from the cardiologist we usually use ultrasound so ah. we, we always use ultrasound for popliteal artery intervention and we usually get the access for making a compression after the uh, after the intervention it is very important I think that the popliteal Artery intervention as some sometimes very harmful for the patient as uh, some pain, some nerve damage. So we usually uh, see by ultrasound wave, and then we see the nerve. We see when for uh, fistula uh, formation after the intervention. So we generally make an uh, intervention uh, less uh, proximally. Uh, like an distal SFA uh, intervention. So we generally make uh, good results for this. But yes, we, we, we sometimes see hematomas, uh, pains. But I think that uh, our patients are generally long vision. And then uh, as, as you see, as you know, that we, we have a secondary option for femoral popliteal bypass. So <laughs> we, we intervene and then Yes, uh, we, 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 we say the patient that we first intervene, and, but we, if we fail, then we make the femoral popliteal bypass. So uh, the results are better, I think. Okay, you have many options for some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes, uh, uh, some, uh, it's a very good cases sharing and a good information for some of the recent update. So, yes, thank uh, some thank you for some uh, some joining uh, some good conferences. So, uh, Ella. So. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Ang. Thank you for your bonus case sharing. <laughs> it's very wonderful, and uh, thanks for all the experts. Thank you for sharing such uh, wonderful presentations and comments to us. It's really really helpful and uh, insightful. Uh, we see that uh, well-designed PTA brown is a basic and essential tool to improve the procedure success. And uh, we, Brosmed have a, uh, we, we have a com complete none of semi-compliant and non-compliant PTA brown, like, um, 014 plus and Castor, 018 Minerva and Achilles, and 035 Atropus and Hermes. And we also have a new member, Super High Pressure PTA Brown Packy, which received FDA clearance July this year. Uh, thank you for all. We would also like to hear any clinical advice from you on the design of our next generation products to bring to us for excellence. Thank you for the trust and support again. 
the recorded section will share later on BrassMed YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other social media platforms. Welcome to follow us. For more information, you can also search BrassMed website or contact us via email sales at brosmed.com. Thank you again for the great sharing, Dr. M, Dr. King, and Dr. Evren. See Thank you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Yeah, thank you for your wonderful sharing. Thank you, Evren. See you next time.